Hello, um, I just want to show something today that um, if it's true, and it does seem to be true, it sort of changes things. Um, and I've done uh, quite a bit of research on this because it was sort of, um, you know, ignored and it was just too, too controversial to, for anybody to really look into, so I did it on my own. And uh, what I ended up with is um, a human lung, which is, this is a left lung, and, and a human footprint, both found in the same dig site, which was a little construction site. And my foot fits in there just exactly like it belongs in there, and that lung, it would fit in me just perfectly. Now, they were this DNA um, certified, and CAT scan, and an autopsy anatomist also certified. And I'm going to show this in great detail and under the microscope and uh, all, all the information and, and the DNA tests and all that business. Now this is, is also extremely interesting because it is very hard to tell what age this is. It's very hard to tell what age this is. However, this displays characteristics of the Triassic era. And I will display, you know, because it was the red, uh, the black cap, the red bed, and the, uh, the gray shale. Uh, so anyway, that's the tri of the Triassic, and I'll explain this. They're very, very bone dry now. They've been sitting around for years. This was um, DNA tested and CAT scan and all that about, oh, about three years ago, I think it was now. Um, but now it's time to, uh, all the research has been done. I'd like to just show and have some explanation well, if this changes history or not. So I'm going to go deeply into um, the things that I did to to verify the things that I was claiming. And, you know, and again, I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes or get in the middle of anything. I just want to see if this is, well, I know it's right. And I just want to see what the scholars have to say about it. And right now it's sort of not being uh, looked into because it's a little um, more than they can, can, can accept because of the, 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 the dogma. The, you know, everybody doesn't want, nobody wants to be wrong. And, and, and uh, who knows, maybe I'm wrong, maybe they're right, or maybe, who knows. So let's just have a look at it. That's all I'm asking for. Okay, in a second I'm going to put a little moisture on here, but first I'm going to explain to you what we have. That is a, a, a human footprint, and it's, um, it appears to be a right foot, and uh, the heel's back here, of course, and the, the bigger toe comes off this side. This actually comes right away from it and I will show the lamination here because this is this is extremely interesting. The top is gray shale and it was wet and so was the red bed. This is the red bed and the gray shale had to be on top of that red bed when he pushed it down through the red bed into the gray, I mean, push the, the gray shale down through and into the red bed, because here's the gray shale protruding below, and the red bed is above. So we're going to go into this in great detail of how this occurred, and that is the Triassic signature, and on top of that was found the black cap, which I have that, um, well, I might as well show it to you, hold on. All right, this is the black cap that was on top, and that's, you know, molded right into that footprint. And um, the red bed is here on the side. Now, when I wet this, it'll become quite apparent. But you can see the gray shale, totally different color than the red bed. So how did the gray shale get pushed down through the red bed unless it was on top of the red bed? It's the only possibility. And then the black cap sat on top of everything and that's how it came out of the hole and and along with it came out the lung and the lung is is is, uh, is quite well articulated I mean you can see all the pleura and the, the tongue at the end and the airway on the side and then when I get a little water the depression of the heart of the heart that's a it's a left lung that's the depression of the heart in the back you show a, a doctor any of this any doctor will understand that that there's a little wet spot of blood at the bottom and that's where we drilled into and took the blood out of there it was dense in blood on the side when it gets wet you'll see the where the airway went in there this is what it is so it um it, it's it, if this is true which is you know it's dna certified and it looks like it's pretty everybody's certified let me put it that way there's no nobody has said no so 
I would say it's time to investigate what this means to history. All right, once again, this is what I have to present. The Triassic footprint of a human, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that's a footprint, and anybody wants to contest that, I'm glad to have them look at it. I, I did other molds of the same thing. It's a footprint. And it is being pushed down through the red, bled, red bed with gray clay. That is a lung, and that's DNA certified. Not too much to talk about there. This is the black cap that went on top of here. Of course, I just soaked all this down. Now, this guy's foot went into this, and as he lifted his foot back up, it did what I call suck-ups, and a little tiny pinch is coming out of there. I don't know if I can get that close enough so you can see. It might be alright. Now on the side it's smooth but when he hit the middle running, I imagine it was running because something was going wrong, his heel he hit there and uh, and these little suck ups when he went like that it leaves these little dimples but not on the sides because they were wrapping around his foot as he sunk into the clay. Very apparent what happened there. And then this landed on top, which it was found in one, whoops, can't see that. It was found in um, one hole, everything together including the lung so I and this is what they call this Triassic signature so I'd like to have somebody um, you know take an interest in it I'm glad to show it to anyone that uh, would like to investigate it alright so that's my question does this impact our history is this worthwhile to look at is somebody interested at all in this Thank you. It's Roger at Mud Fossils, all one word, dot com. All right, thank you. All right, I may have already, or I will show the lung in the microscopic shots, but this was what it looked like when we extracted it from somewhere up in here. I mean, it just it was like taking out raw blood. I mean, you could have injected somebody with it. It was that. It was unbelievably uh, dense with blood, and he said that, you know, at the lab. Now, you can see that it's a similar fibrous material in a fabric woven into a fabric, which is what we see in the, in the, the ones that I showed, and um, it has that red, bloody, gooey stuff in there, which um, lets it become flexible. Now, the one I showed is right here, same, same, same. And this, if you look at that latch right there, that fascia tongue, that holds itself into the matrix of the body, and that is the same fascia tongue right there on this lung, because that holds this lung into the matrix of the body so it doesn't go flapping around when you go running. That's what it is. This is a three DNA test. Now the sample, we sent them out to Helix Bio Labs, and uh, they received them on 620 of 15. So that's three years ago. And they, they tested them, it took a couple of months, and there was three samples, and they came back, and they did DNA extraction, PCR, DNA sequencing analysis, all this. And he, they used two different labs to do this. Now, they, um, one of the things was that lung, and uh, they use bacterial DNA extraction kits, and it was a clean agent DNA and so forth. All done, uh, very well done. So there's no good chance of contamination. Negative controls were negative. There was no problem. And the DNA was dense. And we extracted it from an arterial red blood supply, not swabbing it from something and just hoping for the best. So anyway, this was extremely well done, and it's uh, all detailed in here, and the lung positive, positive you know, positive for the lung, the negative controls were negative, and it was dense with DNA. There was two of them that were dense, one wasn't dense, um, one of the other samples. Now, um, 
so it's uh, it's not something that should be contested uh, without examination and that is what's happened so far so I think it's time to look at it. it's been three years been sitting here and all the rest of the work has been done on it actually and like I said it is um, Gil Hadley who owns an autopsy school did um, the the um, uh, certification of the anatomy and he is gifted I can tell you that um, Jesse Garant and associates who scans racing car engines and industrial equipment did CAT scans on it and uh, the DNA uh, was done by Helix Biolabs and I, I think they call it Helix Paleo Labs now I, I like again I'm not I didn't try to step on anybody's toes but I just wasn't going to walk away from it and now I'd like to have somebody look at it so that's all I'd like to do I'm not trying to hurt anybody I'm not trying to cause any trouble I just want to get the reality and this is something that is sitting here you see I don't think there's any reason or any any ethical way that a teacher or anyone or a professor or anyone that professes to to to, to teach and, and really literally sell knowledge nowadays sh should walk away from something that challenges the, what they're selling. That's all I'm asking for. All right? Thank you. It's Roger at uh, it's Roger at mudfossils.com and I'll gladly work with anyone that would like to bring this forward into a, a mainstream understanding and see what it does mean to our history because there's a lot more to this uh, that I'm sort of holding back on right at the moment. All right? Thank you.